Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, hi, I'm Pranav, and I'm sorry my video doesn't work all that well, but uh, I really appreciate you taking out the time to talk to us, and this was really helpful. Uh, my question revolves around the fact, so in the in the beginning, you had mentioned that, you know, there could be situations where there's yelling and venting out of anger. And in such a situation, if the other person does not see my point of view at all, or if there is a fundamental conflict in our opinions, then how do I exercise compassion for that person? And how do I keep my actions virtuous and not, not be non-virtuous? Right. And so it's like there are very few things that are more important than harmony. You know, there's some like huge social justice issues or environmental justice issues where you maybe can make an argument that having disruptive harmony for a little bit might lead to progressive change. But even in those cases, usually change is built on the back of positive relationships. So if your first motivation can be, how can I maintain compassion for this person? Then whatever you agree or disagree on has to be secondary. So if they feel loved by you, if they feel compassion from you, they're probably gonna have a lot more space to hear your point of view. Sure. But if you're coming from anger and you're coming from frustration, it, that makes people shut down, doesn't it? So even if you're right, they're not going to hear that you're right because they're too shut down. They feel threatened. So instead of working on the issue first, work on the relationship first. That's one idea. And my second question revol revolved around the preliminaries. So I just want to ensure that I want to get my preliminary rise be before I go ahead on the path. So mm -hmm. are there any resources that I could refer to um, before heading on the path and, you know, just ensuring that the preliminaries are right. Yeah, yeah. Um, one really good book is called uh, Open Heart, Clear Mind by Tubtin Children. Sure. Yeah, that really explains very well. Um, yeah. And then just to really ask yourself, okay, for a meaningful life, what needs to happen? To have a good rebirth, what needs to happen? to get out of samsara, what needs to happen. And those kind of three thoughts, if you can keep them active in your mind, then it can direct your study in a really good way so that your preliminaries are really um, conducive to the great vehicle, conducive to the best motivation. So you're just asking yourself, okay, for a meaningful life, what needs more of, what needs less of? Sure. Good future life, what more, what less. To get out of samsara, what more, what less. And just kind of like sit with it, really personal. It can be like a journal exercise. But um, you don't have to know all the answers. It's like kind of keep those questions open. And then whatever Dharma class you go to, you'll hear answers to those questions. Sure. Thanks a lot. And yeah. your YouTube channels and your YouTube videos help a lot. So thank you for that. You're very welcome.